with news you can use. We're going to talk a little bit about what type of product. This is going to be an important follow-up news you can use to last week's one where we discussed uh, the fact that these cycles out in the industry run seven to 14 years. We're in a 14 year, in the middle, I think, of a 14 year cycle right now. <clears throat> and we've had seven years of going up from 2014 till 2021 or 22. It could be a seven to eight year cycle. Uh, where it peaked. It could have peaked last year, could be peaking right now, could peak in a month from now, could have peaked three months ago, but we're at the peak. Uh, and I believe it'll be about a seven-year downslide like it was last time from 2007 to 2014 uh, before we hit bottom. Now, the transition periods, which are primarily 12 to 24 months, uh, at the beginning and end of those changes in cycles. In other words, the market goes up and then this, the peak for the next 12 to 24 months are the best times, in my opinion, to make the most amount of money in all the markets. Uh, and then when it hits the bottom, <clears throat> that first 12 to 24 months after it hits the bottom will be the best times. But in the rest of the time, uh, let's say on a 14 year cycle, all except for two years, are kind of jump balls. They could be good or bad depending on what you do. So what you do is important. And what you do, by, by what you do, I mean, what product, what type of house uh, do you involve yourself with that will give you A, the maximum return and B, the least amount of risk. So the, the easiest way I can explain it <clears throat> is if you look at uh, the potential scope of market is everything, you know, I'm using a, a ruler, a 12-inch ruler here. Uh, if you can go from really high-end product, uh, you know, $5 million mansions on the Pacific Ocean, or actually they're more like $32 million mansions on the Pacific Ocean, down to, uh, you know, a beat-up, beater mobile home that, uh, you know, even a, a trailer hitch can't love. Uh, and you look at everything in between, <clears throat> the safest in that 12 of 14 years is going to be right down what we call the bubble, the main line. And it's going to be uh, basically a 3-2 type home, uh, average square footage, uh, either city or uh, narrow suburbs, uh, maybe has a small yard, could have a, a bigger yard, but it's a starter home or first time home buyer home. It's, the, it's that home that people, when they decide they don't want to live in an apartment anymore, they get married and they want to go live there and raise their kids. And that is the best market in all markets. That's the best product to have in all markets. Now, it's not the sexiest and it is not, let me allow some people in here. It looks like we got some people waiting. <clears throat> um, it's not the sexiest deal out there. Uh, it's not where you make the most amount of money in a great market for probably another two or three of those years, you can make more money on these giant mansions, high-end product, that type of thing. At the bottom of the market, when we're near the trough, say seven years from now, you know, something like a double wide mobile home on a permanent foundation, you can probably, those are gonna be very easy to sell because there'll be a lot more buyers at the lower end, lower half of the market than there are. You know, once again, as we were going up and before we got to the top, the higher end of the markets where you can make a lot of money, and generally, most rehabbers focus on this middle to this move up market, which would be right here. Okay, so three to 1,600 square feet up to four, three, 2,300, 3,000 square feet that is either the first time home buyer or more likely the first home they move up to once they start having a family. And that's, that is a good market uh, generally for that type of product, probably the three to four years before we reach peak and maybe even in the transition and within a year or two after uh, where we start going from highs down to lows again. But <clears throat> you can always be safe on that bubble, on the middle. Uh, the, the average uh, Joe homeowner, we used to call it upper blue collar neighborhood. It's lower white collar neighborhood. It's what we call a B neighborhood uh, type home, not an A neighborhood, but not a C neighborhood. It's like a solid B neighborhood uh, where people will go uh, when they first get married or when they have had their first children, uh, that type of thing. Sometimes retirees will, will move from a larger home down to this market on their way down to a uh, retirement community type thing. And, and the people who have lived in mobile homes, apartments, grandma's basement, which is over here, uh, you know, the first stop when they can buy a home after they've rented a home 
is right here in the middle again. And so the nice thing about this middle market is this is the one that the government always supports. So in other words, there's always going to be uh, financing for this, and it's going to be in the form of the GSEs, Fannie, Freddie, those kinds of things, or the conventional marketplace. Because frankly, this is a bubble. This is like a bell curve. So even over a 14-year period, if you look at this like this type of proportion, there's always the most amount of people who want to buy this, and there's the most number of homes in this area, and there's the most number of sales in this area. And this is where the demographic for the whole industry gets measured. So this is the safe spot right in the middle. So if you have a choice right now between a really high-end home, let's say a $900,000 home. Now, I know here in California, the average home is 800 and something thousand right now. So 900 is basically like right here in California. But in most communities in the country, um, and frankly, even in most communities, what would be B neighborhoods in California, it's still going to be down this center line. Uh, it's going to be right in the middle. And that would be the one that I would encourage you guys to spend your time, effort, and energy on. If you get a good deal on a you know six-bedroom, five-bathroom house that's 4,000 square feet, and you know it's at a really high-end neighborhood and all that, I, I would look very carefully about that because your exit strategy is really thin. There's not a lot of people who want to buy up when we go into a recession, which we're going to be going in. We're going to be talking about that next week a little bit more. And we're not yet to the low end of the market where people have experienced the effects of the recession and have dropped their income levels down to where they've got to get, uh, you know, say to a mobile home community or apartment living, that type of thing. So I would encourage everybody to focus on that bubble on the main line, three, two starter home market, uh, average square footage. Uh, nothing fancy, um, but those are where you can always make money. Now, one other thing that I want to make everybody aware of, the lenders are coming out already, and they have been for the last six months, with new products. Since interest rates have skyrocketed and they've doubled uh, in the last four or five months, since January, actually, um, the lenders are now coming up with this new creative solution for too expensive an interest, and it's called an adjustable rate mortgage. Well, those of us who've been around since 2008, we've seen this dude hit us hard between the eyes back then, and that's what really caused the adjustable rate mortgage is what caused, in my opinion, the excessively stupid lending practices that went on from 2004 to 2008 or nine. And a big, uh, a big reason that we had this great recession in 2008 in the housing market is because there was a lot of people who qualified for an adjustable rate. Te they call them teaser rate loans, um, artificially bought down loans. And then when these adjusted up two or three years later, they couldn't afford those payments. You're, you're seeing that happen right now. People are moving off of the traditional 30 year fixed rate, 20% down to 10% down a big buy down on the interest, low uh, interest rates for the first two or three years, and then escalating up. So uh, they, they will tease everybody off the sidelines who otherwise can't qualify for a loan because of the debt to equity ratio. And they put that adjustment window out past the period of time when they have to qualify. In other words, let's say it's a 35% debt to, debt to income ratio. Um, and they, today it's like 42%, but they, they raise that window out, drop the interest rate, and these people can qualify for at least the next two or three years. Um, it is a, it's a problem. Uh, it was a problem before. It was a problem in the 90s when they did it, and it's going to be a problem now. But the government is not stepping in to stop that because that is the only uh, arrow left in their quiver at this point to keep people buying houses. So You'll see more and more adjustable rate loans. Of course, um, all that's going to do is absorb some of the inventory that's going to be left over from people who can't traditionally qualify, but it will, it will keep the market moving along nicely, but it's going to really be offered at the high end from the middle to the high end of the market. Um, now, people who buy a $30 million home, $10 million home, even $5 million homes, you know, they typically have better credit, better cash flow, better down payment. They don't necessarily need to use that, but you'll see people that are in that, say, 100, 1 million to 5 million range use that type of credit product a lot. 
And a lot of those properties will come back around in five years um, before the next crash, the, the bottom uh, that we hit in terms of the cycle. So anyway, that's our news you can use for today. We'll talk a little bit more about the impending recession next week.